Sunrise, sunset, sunrise, sunset. Swiftly fly the years, one season following another. Laden with happiness and tears. Sunrise, sunset, sunrise, sunset. Swiftly fly the years, one season following another. Laden with happiness and tears. No doubt, you can hear Tevya and Golda and the village walking along, musing and singing at the wedding of their oldest daughter, Tet Zetel, to the poor Taylor Motel in Fiddler on the Roof. The song's melody and lyrics look backward and forward with pathos, one season following another, laden with happiness and tears. They sing remembering their children now grown and knowing the tears, the suffering, and the hatred they will experience. You hear in the song the yearning and the empathy to give, to be able to give to their children wisdom and help. Sunrise, sunset, the song goes on, laden with happiness and tears. Tonight, we continue the great three days, telling and singing the passion story with tears and anguish leading to betrayal to the cross and death, and then, not surface happiness, but inexpressible, unanticipated joy and resurrection. Our ritual song in these days includes tears and terror transformed into a new key, a new beginning. As we will say in the Good Friday Anthem later this evening, we glory in your cross, O Lord, and praise and glorify your holy resurrection for the virtue of your cross. Joy has come to the whole world. Tonight, we are in the middle of the good news. The song that is the liturgy of the great three days. It started with sunset, sunset on Thursday and continues through Easter sunset. We're celebrating the great mystery, the Paschal mystery of Christ the Lamb dying and rising and our union with him. The liturgy tonight heavily emphasizes one aspect of the Paschal mystery, which is the whole story. Jesus' crucifixion and death. But the song that goes on is the unity and the totality of both dying and rising. We sing this cross, this death, this entombment in the context of the great three-day liturgy that is about more than death. Echoing over our heads, we hear Jesus say, unless a grain of wheat, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Was Jesus singing only of his dying? His dying? Or was he singing of the essential human task of growing beyond our survival instincts of our animal brain and our ego-driven operating system of self-giving and generosity of full human personhood. 
Isn't that the song that we're rehearsing and singing in these three days? Our ritual song, if it is to be real, if it is to be more than just going through the motions again this year like we did last year, has to be true to life and to God's care. It must include the lives and the deaths of all creation. Friends, we are in the midst of a cosmic performance, even though it's just little old St. Margaret's here together. But it's cosmic, and we're joined with all other sisters and brothers in Christ in this cosmic performance. The music is not only human, but the, song, the sounds and the songs of all creation. Glaciers calving, woodpeckers pecking and tapping, tornadoes twisting and tearing and killing, streams gurgling and bees buzzing. Christ's liturgy can and must embody the joys of living among earth creatures, all of them. Our music resonates with both death and life. In singing, we join with the fuller reality, that alternative soundscape that's all around us, inviting us to inhabit and participate in the song of God so loved the world for that's been sung for 4.3 billion years. And it was sung again in a very human way, an incarnate way, anew in Christ Jesus. In this age of planet Earth being crucified, we must sing Christ's cross and death redeeming the cosmos. Our listening and singing are that large. So more is at stake than ritualizing the prayer book services, okay? We are engaged in one great liturgical song of the mystery of God, the mystery of our union with Christ Jesus, in whom joy has come to the whole world. I know it's Good Friday, but what I'm hoping we can realize is it isn't just about death and crucifixion. It's about how that somehow mysteriously brings life and the new creation. Our rec recurring assembly in the great three days is to sing one song. It is one service with pauses or breaks between the stanzas of Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, and then Holy Saturday, and then the Easter Vigil, and Easter Day morning, and then Easter Vespers. That's all the verses of the song. Each stanza of the service ends without a blessing or a dismissal. We simply, quietly walk out the door and go on with our lives, and then we come back together again for the next stanza. We keep silence, leaving and entering. In the times between the stanzas, we keep a holy pause, a, a, if you will, a holy mindfulness, holding an awareness that the liturgy continues and we are journeying with each other. So, sunrise, sunset, on Monday, Thursday, we celebrated the institution of the Eucharist at the Lord's table in the Lord's Supper. There, our worship song was a new commandment to love one another, sometimes, as the prayer book allows, with the washing of one another's feet. Then we stripped the altar and the chancel area, leaving us with a heightened sense of Christ's abandonment an impending crucifixion resonant with the tears, suffering, and loneliness experienced by all who live. Now, another sunrise and sunset has brought us to Good Friday, and the song continues with focus on the passion in Jesus' 
in John's Gospel, followed by the solemn collects and, and anthems that link crucifixion and resurrection. Dying and rising are sung together with the emphasis on creation's Lord dying. We fall silent for the veneration of the cross and then share communion from the reserved sacrament and depart. Then another sunrise and sunset attune us to Holy Saturday. On Holy Saturday, there is no communion. It's an empty day. The song goes silent. We may hum as we prepare the space here in the church or in our homes and in our hearts for what is to come at sunset. But the mood of the day is a recognition that death is real. The tomb is inhabited by the dead. Oh, so many dead. Extinct species, victims of war and hate, trans youth who couldn't live with their rejection, dead zones of the earth where the climate change and human devastation have carelessly stopped the music. In silence, we recollect that Jesus was dead and lay inert, spent without breath in the tomb, and we sense that his death connects us and all deaths past and present in the whole creation. Then, sometime between sunset on Saturday and sunrise on Sunday, the Spirit and the prayer book call us to the great vigil of Easter. Vigils are times of watching and waiting during the night, a time when the world is normally asleep, but the nightingale sings. There is another meaning for vigil, a peaceful demonstration in support of a particular cause, typically without speeches but certainly singing. Think of the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma, Alabama in 1965. We shall overcome. And Greta Thunberg repeating that phrase almost like a chant, how dare you, at the UN's climate summit in 2019. And just this week, Thousands of students, or at least a thousand students, in the Tennessee State House calling for stricter gun laws. The church's vigil is in solidarity with the world laden with happiness and tears. St. Margaret's isn't singing the vigil this year, but maybe next year. But some of us, like migrating birds, will go to another church for the great vigil, or some of us will attend via live streaming in the National Cathedral. In the ritual song of the great Easter vigil, Christ incorporates us into his saving acts of, act of making all pain and death a new song. A bonfire is lit and a great candle that we'll see on Sunday morning will be lit and set ablaze, and the deacon will sing during the vigil the hauntingly beautiful exultet, and it repeats its repeated declarations, this is the night when you brought Israel out of bondage in Egypt. This is the night when all who believe in Christ are restored to grace and holiness of life. This is the night when Christ broke, broke the bonds of death and hell and rose victorious from the grave. The song transposes creation's pain and death into cosmic joy and resurrection. The great vigil of Easter is deeply symbolic and very earthy at the same time. Here the risen Christ meets us in fire, story, bath, and meal. On Easter Vigil, we just do everything. 
It's the whole song of creation and redemption, a strong enactment of the rule and reign of God realized. It's the first and great service of Easter. Then comes another sunrise. The Easter morning song is Christ the Lord is risen today. Like birds chirping and whales breaching, we join creation in the ecstatic resurrection song. In this God's creation redemption song, we sing the central mystery of our faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And through baptism and the reaffirmation of baptism, we are buried with Christ in his dying and raised with him in newness of life. I haven't looked at the Easter bulletin yet, but oh, I hope that that baptismal font is going to be full of water and that cover is going to be off of it and we can splash in the water together and remember who we are and remember our baptism and be joyful. Easter morning's Eucharist is the same rite that we always use on every Sunday on page 3, starting on page 355. But Easter Day's Eucharist is the big Easter. And then finally, the sun sets again. And we come to the end of the three-day feast, praying Easter Vespers. I don't remember if I've ever been in a church that did Easter Vespers. The quiet service concludes the ritual song of the great three days. The gospel reading for that service is the Easter Vespers story, the Luke story of the road to Emmaus and the supper when the disciples recognize Jesus rising. With them we sing that ecstatic awareness, were not our hearts? burning within us while we were, he was walking and talking with us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us. In Easter Vespers, we recollect the sense that throughout the three days, our hearts have been ablaze with the mystery of knowing Christ Jesus crucified and risen anew. The prayer book does not include Easter Vespers. I checked that out. I thought it was there, but it wasn't. I'm not sure why, but I can guess. It might be a recognition of the prayer book that we humans will endure only so much. Even so, perhaps after all the ham and the sweet potatoes and the cake and one more chocolate Easter egg, we can remember as darkness comes and the sun sets, that Christ in mystery made himself known to us in the breaking of the bread and throughout the great three days as our hearts recognize that we are laden with happiness and tears. And what will be the character of the new fire in us? Well, will Jesus crucified and risen have moved us? How will the song we sing be different? Will it be more faithful? More generous? More inclusive? 